Hey, all it's Tom. Yeah, I was sitting here watching a, uh, a video from a called uh, the Real Learning Real Adventure channel it's about mountain men. And they had these two guys that was dressed up, you know, and they're character actors, but they were out there in the woods and supposedly these uh, two hikers walked up to them and started asking them questions about, you know, what they're doing up there and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm thinking to myself, now, you know, these guys are out in the middle of nowhere, supposedly. Camp next to a beaver pond, dressed like they just came out of the 1820s, with no weapons. And uh, these two 21st century hikers just happened across them, you know. It was funny. But it got me thinking, you know, is my generation a dying breed? And what I mean by that is the kids nowadays, most of them have enough money to be able to, say, afford a decent knife and backpack and camping stuff and whatnot. Tomahawks weapons. But when guys like myself and um, Blackie Thomas, Dave Canterbury, uh, Dave Pearson, really big monkey, and all them guys. When we were kids, we, we didn't have the money to be able to afford any good stuff. We basically scratched together some kind of kit and went. You know, we didn't take Mountain House with us. We, we took food we could either cook or food you got in a can. You know, like a can of pork and beans and some fish you caught was dinner. Where nowadays kids would be like, Ugh. So I was just wondering, you know, are we really a dying breed? We didn't have Baco Laplanders. You know, Maxpedition pouches and uh, Nalgene canteens, or for that matter, you know, titanium heavy cover canteens that cost $150 per a canteen. We didn't have any of that crap. If you were lucky, you had a, you know, an old iron military or Vietnam hand-me-down canteen from somebody in a cup and a case, if you were really lucky. And, uh, you know, the blankets to cover up with and your hunting knife if you had one or, you know, somebody gave you a pocket knife, that's what you had. That's what you went with. But I'm not talking overnighters. I mean, sometimes we spent, you know, on like a holiday weekend, we'd spend two, three days out there. We'd go back home and resupply it, but we'd still be out there for two, three days on you know, basically what you guys would consider to be less than minimal equipment. And I, I don't know about Dave, but the stories I heard from uh, Mike Peters and uh, Blackie Thomas and them guys. Excuse me. Mike Peters? Mike Barton. We didn't have that stuff. They, they learned how to camp on scratch. We built our own shelters. If you had a shelter, we, you know, we built big bonfires instead of long fires for the, the warmth factor. Some guys had better mentors than others. Uh, Blackie Thomas seemed to have, you know, a lot of good mentors and, um, Dave Pearson, I don't know if you ever met his brother Jim or not, but he had a lot of good mentors and, you know, but we still did things on scratch. You know, some of my best memories of childhood and being a kid was, you know, hand lining at the creek for trout for dinner and, and you know, backing up against a down log for a, a backstop and putting a a bed sheet over the top of you for a shelter. We didn't know what waterproofing was, you know. There was no of these poly tarps around. There was, if you were lucky, at a 
excuse me, if you were lucky, you had one of them um, uh, military pup tents, the canvas ones. I had found one on a dump later on in my, my time, but and they were heavy, and they weren't exactly waterproof, especially the older ones that canvas was, you know, they started to dry rot and stuff. It had leaked through. One I had, anyway. One I had had more patches on it than a United States general. And, uh, like I said, I just wonder if it's a dying breed. I, I remember times when I went out there with a fish knife for days. And, you know, that that's unheard of nowadays. God forbid you should carry a pocket knife for a couple-day trip. And a K-bar. They had an old military K-bar at one point that the gentleman in the Navy gave me. It was a Mark II Navy K-bar, but same thing. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know nothing about stick tangs or rat tail tangs. Of course, we didn't try to beat our knives through three-inch trees either, but, yeah, I, I didn't know nothing about that. And I K-bar went everywhere with me, lasted through everything for eons. It just makes me wonder. I heard tell a story one time. Dave was Dave Canterbury was talking about. Uh, oh, I forget what it was. We were talking about knives one time over on Self Reliance Outfitters or the Pathfinder Learning Center. I think it was. And he said he remembers at one time his grandfather or his uncle or something that he you know they were out hunting. He remembers him pulling out that uh, stag handle Puma Bowie. to clean his squirrels up and stuff and it's like wow you know I remember when um, I remember when they were like you had to be rich to own one of them things or you, you one of them people that saved up bought one knife for the rest of your life it's like my dad you know my, my dad had one two three four knives the entire time he was alive that I knew he had this uh, Model 4 Remington Hunter that I have. Uh, I bought him a small 4-inch blade hunting knife that I have. He had a... Um, I bought him a beautiful stockman for his birthday one year, and he never used it. He said it was too pretty to put in his pocket. And he also had a... Um, I believe it was a Schrade or a Gerber LST little, little junk knife he got with a fishing pole set. My sister bought him and he had that knife on him till the day he died that little pocket knife he did everything with a deer squirrels everything <laughs> same thing with my uncle I had an uncle that died when he was 92 and my aunt said to me would you like one of his knives yeah sure and, well this is the knife he always used for deer okay and she hands me one of them buck copies from Pakistan that's the knife he used for deer for the last 15 or 20 years and it just made me wonder sometimes when I see things that, and I see a guy going out with fifteen two thousand dollars worth of equipment on fifteen hundred two thousand dollars between his backpack, his belt, his knife, his gun, his his this, his dad, his hammock set. It makes me wonder. It's like you know, wow. Now two thousand dollars these days would be about five six hundred of my time. And people still didn't go out with that much. You went out, you know, like I said, old military backpacks that were around and uh, purses used for haversacks that we didn't know were haversacks, but it was just more convenient. You know, whatever knife you might have had. I I had a uh, imperial fish knife that I still have. And my buddy Mark had a buck... I can't remember what Gordon had. Gordon had a Boy Scout knife, but it wasn't like a Utica or anything. It was a weird name. It was, uh... well, I don't remember. But anyway, it was like a Camp King. And uh, Rich didn't have a knife, did Richard's mom and dad wouldn't let him have one. And Mark to this day still carries a uh, 
one of them imperial hunting knives that you used to buy in a store for like two fifty dollar seventy five something like that. He, that's the knife he still uses to this day. He had that buck knife, and he stopped using it and he bought one of them imperials and never put it down. So, like I said, are we a dying breed? That's all I ever wondered about. So, hey, this is Tom. I want to thank you for your time and your patience. Leave some comments below on this whole thing, because I do know a couple of guys out there that travel minimal. Um, Cal's from Cal's Treks and Trails. Hiked across the United States with nothing more than a tarp and something to cook on, I think. And uh, when he was coming back from this way from Oklahoma, he started asking questions about things, and I, you know, directed him and Uh, SMD 48200, another guy grew up in the mountains, and if you watch some of his videos, like his spike camp, he has sleeping gear, a tarp, and something to cook with. That's it. it. He doesn't play around with, you know, crap. And he's hiking the Appalachian Trail. He's only got 200 and some miles to go, so there's some channels out there. And, um, yeah, like I said, leave some comments below about all this. But I want to thank you for your time and your patience. Um, don't forget to share the video out, and uh, if you like the video, hey, sub up. Welcome to the family. And we will see you guys on the next one.